and welcome to the Watch Kaki channel where we bring you all the good and honest watch reviews. If you're new to my YouTube channel, please subscribe to my channel, click the like buttons and come back here every week. I've got watch reviews uploaded every week for you. In today's video, we are going to take a look at this watch that I just bought a few weeks back. This is the Seiko Samurai and I have this version with the Pepsi bezel. The reference number for this watch is SRPB53K1. So the SRPB53 comes with a dual color Pepsi bezel and it comes on a rubber strap as opposed to other models in the line that comes with a bracelet. All right, I got this one a few weeks back and I really like some of the features found on this watch, some of the unique design features. And of course, the watch has a really attractive price point. Uh, we'll talk more about the price later on in this review. So before that, just a bit of background information on the Seiko Samurai model. Uh, the word Samurai or the nickname Samurai is never found in Seiko's catalog. Uh, instead, it is a nickname affectionately given by Seiko fans. And there are many reasons or many theories as to how the model line got its nickname Samurai. But online banter has it that the main reason is due to the uh, Samurai sword like kind of a minute hand all right and another reason could be another theory is that uh, the casing due to its angular casing and uh, looks like it's been cut by a samurai sword or something like that so hence the nickname samurai well if you ask me i think the samurai nickname is a little bit far-fetched because i think the minute hand this kind of design it is pretty common with many different brands or different divers and uh, uh, furthermore, this watch looks nothing like Tom Cruise or Ken Watanabe, so I don't know why fans were very quick to call this line the uh, Samurai, but I'll just leave it as it is uh, without ruffling some feathers. So one thing we know for sure is that the Seiko Samurai has got a very unique design to its case. Uh, it doesn't follow any vintage diver or anything like that. It is not a reimagined model or a redesigned model. It is a fresh model on its own. It's a modern design first came out in 2004, the older series, and this series, the SRPB series, it was launched in 2017, if I'm not wrong, and it features slightly different handset, namely the broad arrow hour hand, and I think even the case material is changed to stainless steel, which sort of brings down the price a little bit. And in the year since it's launched in 2017, many different uh, variations have been launched, different dial colors, different case coatings and all that limited editions but today the one that we are looking at is more or less a standard run of the mill SRPB53 which is part of the uh, four designs that were launched first launched in 2017 and these watches can be found today at really good price points so let me just zoom in here and talk to you a bit on the specs the bezel is the widest point of the watch and it's got a bezel diameter of 43.8 millimeters got a case thickness total thickness of 13.3 millimeters it is not too thick for a big size diver it's got a pretty standard Seiko 22 millimeter divers watch lug width and it's got a really short lug length of 48 millimeters and I also noticed that the spring bar sits really close to the case so this one if you are looking at very thick leather straps or NATO straps it may not work very well due to the fact that the spring bar sits pretty close to the case. Some extra information on the dimension. Crystal size is about 32.5 millimeters and we've got a very good size 7 millimeter screw down crown with matching knurlings. Take a look here you've got matching knurlings on the crown as well as the edge of the bezel. Quite cool. Powering the Seiko Samurai is Seiko's in-house movement, the 4R35, and this is a workhorse movement. It hacks, it hand winds, it is automatic, uh, it requires almost no maintenance, and it is also found in plenty of micro brands and homage watches. And the Samurai also has a dead flat hardlex crystal, there is no sapphire crystal for entry-level Seikos, and the crystal actually sits just a little bit recessed, and I think now, there's a bit of protection given by the bezel. So earlier in the video, I mentioned that these watches can be found at pretty attractive prices. And I think uh, these days, the basic uh, production models of the Samurai, they can be obtained for about Singapore dollars, 350 or less. So 
uh, with discounts and coupons you may get this one just under Singapore dollars, $300. Now let's go on and talk a little bit about the case design. As mentioned, the Samurai is famed for its angular cuts found on its casing. There are no curves, no bevels of any sort. The lines are hard, just look like they're chiseled or like some fans have believed they are cut by a Samurai sword, the Katana. It's got a good balance of polished and brushed surfaces. As you can see here, the case sides are brushed, they're vertically brushed and some polished surfaces can be seen especially on the edge of the bezel and this part here, there's a recess part in the case side and it is polished, uh, pardon me for the fingerprints here and the case back is also polished and it's got a bezel with I believe aluminum inserts and this one is done in Pepsi colour, blue and living 1 to 15 minutes in red pretty cool design timeless design i would say it's got an aluminum insert and uh, it's got a 120 click mechanism all right it's not the most premium i can hear a certain degree of hollowness in the build but it's okay at this price point you can't complain it's also interesting to note that seiko has designed the samurai such that the bezel can only be operated around the 12 and 6 o'clock area now if i were to put my fingers here i think it's pretty difficult to operate the bezel because of the case of the case design so the best places to operate the bezel are indeed 12 and 6 o'clock this one's also got drill lugs and that makes strap change pretty easy and once again you've got to bear in mind that the spring bar sits really close to the case so um, Perhaps thicker rubber straps or leather straps may not work here. So overall, a very solid and chunky diver. We are looking at a diver with very short uh, lug length and I really like the fact that the case almost looks as though it's a cushion case but it is very different from the usual cushion case because of all the hard lines, the angular cuts found on the case. And I also like the fact that Seiko has done something special at the case side and They've included this kind of recess area where it's done in a different finish. So we've got brush finish here and in the center you've got a polished surface that is recessed. Sort of breaks up the monotony of the case design and I think it looks pretty cool. The case back here is the standard Seiko Tsunami motif embossed really nicely and it's done in a circular radial brush finish. And I like the fact that the case back doesn't protrude too much. That by makes the watch uh, sit very comfortable. So in terms of case, design and build quality, I would say the Samurai is very decent for the money you're paying for. It is not premium, by no means a premium watch. And I would say the brushing and the polishing, it's very basic, if that's the word to describe it. Uh, the polish areas and the brush areas, I think uh, if done properly, they should be able to show a bigger contrast as it is the brushing is not very well defined and the polishing is not very mirror like uh, but again i have to stress at this price you can't really ask for more so let's go on and talk about the dial design now for the basic standard production series of samurai they've got this waffle like dial and i really love uh, the texture found on the dial it's like it looks like a waffle to me but of course Officially, they are known as Hopnail or uh, if I may try to pronounce it's Cloud du Paris. So it's a type of uh, design and really gives it a really nice texture. So the markers on the Samurai, they look like they're applied markers and we've got a mixture of bars and trapezium. So 6 o'clock, 9 o'clock and 12 o'clock, we've got trapeziums and the rest of the markers are bars. Now, due to the fact that we've got a date at 3 o'clock, the 3 o'clock marker is, a, I would say, is a shorter than usual. And we have the handset for the new series of Samurai uh, launched in 2017. We've got the broad arrow for our hand and the Samurai sword for minutes. I would say it's pretty cool. They are bordered with a chrome plated finish. And of course, we've got a red tip on the central seconds hand for this one. So I had to do a bit of a hand adjustment so you can see the uh, Prospects logo printed 
at the 6 o'clock area together with the word automatic and divers 200 meters. Uh, this is an ISO certified 200 meter diver and of course you've got that really classic looking Seiko printed Seiko logo printed on just under the 12 o'clock marker. And the chapter ring is done in a matching color to the dial. Uh, in honesty, I wish that the bezel color uh, matches closer to the dial but like I said, uh, you can't ask for more at this price point. I've just blasted the loom with my studio lights. Let's switch off the lights now and take a look at the loom. And boom, there are no surprises here. Seiko loom, the brightest as usual. We've got fully loom, markers, hour and minute hands loom and we've got the loom peep above the 12th marker. And of course, we've got the short little loom at the 3 o'clock marker. This loom is very bright. Don't wear this to the cinema. Not that there are any cinemas to go to these days. Let's look at the wrist shot of the Seiko Samurai in natural light. Here you will see that the watch fits really well and is also held by the stock silicone strap. It's a really nice and flexible strap with nice buckle. And I would say this watch is very comfortable to wear. And there is a very short luck to luck length and there is almost no luck gap as you can see from the side profile here. Overall, I would say this watch has no problems even on smaller wrists. So to sum up, I would say the Seiko Samurai is a modern day classic. Uh, it doesn't have the vintage vibes uh, as with many Seiko divers, but this one, I would say it's a modern design and it is definitely suitable for anyone who wants to start or embark on a Seiko collection. Uh, this is one of those watches that you can't miss. We don't want to pass on the opportunity to own one of the iconic Seiko designs and this one comes at a pretty good price these days uh, around Singapore dollars, $300 so it's a very good buy for the money. Plenty of plus points such as the super bright loom as with many Seiko divers and I really love the textured wafer dial, I really love it. Uh, it really adds uh, something special you know, to the world of sunbursts and uh, shiny black dials and this one's got a textured wafer dials and wow being a big fan of waffles, I really love this watch. And of course, this being an entry-level Seiko diver, don't expect to find top-notch workmanship. Uh, in fact, I wish uh, they improve on certain aspects of the design, uh, namely the bezel. I wish the bezel insert is of a higher quality. For some reasons, I think the uh, finish or the paint on the aluminum insert, I think they should, they should be improving it because it sort of makes the work, uh, watch looks a little bit cheap. So perhaps, ceramic or sapphire or anything like that would improve the appearance of the watch and of course the overall finish the finishing on the watch uh, to me is less than ideal because I think even the brushing and the polishing they don't look very defined I know I'm nitpicking here but I think if these things are improved or sorted out the finishing is improved uh, the bezel the color looks less cartoonish I think this watch will be really perfect so there you have it, the Seiko Samurai SRPB53K1. This is an entry-level Seiko diver and for the price, you really can't go wrong. It's got really uh, nice features, cool features, knurlings, matching knurlings at the crown and edge of bezel. And of course, it's got the unique, distinct angular cuts on the K-sides. Very unmistakable design. Uh, one look at it, you know, oh, this is the Seiko Samurai. Uh, just like the uh, other watches, iconic watches like Tuna or Sumo. So one look, you know that this is the design and I would say this is a collectible for the money, you can't go wrong. So that's all for today. If you like the video, if you like my channel, please like and subscribe. The Watch Kaki together with George. We'll see you next week. Bye bye. Seiko Samurai is a modern classic and it's really, it's really lovely. So if you like the video, if you like George, if you like this glass here, if you like my hand, uh, so George, what do you think? Shall we challenge the system and call this the Seiko Waffle instead? Tell me, what do you think?